Services are being held for former Nevada Assemblyman Tyrone Thompson, who passed away suddenly earlier this month. A viewing was held this afternoon at Victory Baptist Church. That's also where homecoming service will be held tomorrow at 11 a.m. Along with serving as a state legislator, Thompson was a longtime employee of Clark County. He is remembered especially for his work to help the homeless and less fortunate populations. State lawmakers are up against a midnight deadline to vote on about 75 bills or else they fail to advance. Now, bills related to criminal justice, the, uh, the marriage age, voting rights are among just a few of those that are on the chopping block. Our Politics Now team is in Carson City tonight and Patrick Walker is live outside the legislative building with an update for us. Patrick. Hi there, Denise and Brian. Yeah, lawmakers getting a very early start today, 7 a.m trying to avoid being up against the midnight deadline tonight. It has been a busy day, but they did manage to accomplish that. Many of those high-profile bills to make it out were in the Senate Judiciary Committee. Republicans broke from Democrats specifically on three bills, but were unable to vote those measures down. Assembly Bill 431 would allow voting rights to be restored to convicted felons upon release from custody. Assembly Bill 139 would set the marriage age at 18 and not allow parents or a judge to approve any marriages for those under 18. And Assembly Bill 183 would prohibit the use of privately run prisons. Sandoval's uh, um, veto statement, I was persuaded that uh, this uh, effort would uh, take away uh, needed um, state flexibility if that comes up. I think you can look around the country and examples abound about the problems with uh, these kind of privately run facilities. I, I hope the committee will support this. Well, a bill that did not make the deadline, Assembly Bill 411, would have decriminalized most traffic violations. Instead, misdemeanors like broken taillights or speeding violations would become civil violations, taking potential jail time off the table. And to come back out here live, my Politics Now co-host Steve Sebelius is joining me. A couple of other bills we were looking at today as well. One, uh, it had to do with confidentiality of records related to the PERS system. Uh, essentially, what happened to that? There were some changes. Yeah, there were some changes. This bill initially would have kept the names of public employees confidential, but would have revealed a lot of other information, including a pension amount, how long they'd worked for the state, and when they retired. Well, they kind of flipped it uh, today. The names will be public, the pension amount will be public, but the retirement uh, date, the years of service, those will be confidential going forward. So a lot of advocates say that that uh, deprives the public and the press of the uh, ability to look over the uh, the uh, uh, shoulder of PERS to make sure those pensions are appropriate. So, uh, so that one, uh, although looks like it's going to go to the assembly floor, and I think it'll pass. So it'll will be interesting to see what happens when it gets to uh, Governor Sisolak whether he'll sign it or not. Assemblywoman Hardegee's bill, uh, AB 291, that was had the bump stock ban in it, but it's, it's a much larger gun package bill. Uh, that received a waiver today, so it was subject to the deadline, but got a waiver, got a reprieve. Uh, there's been some kind of fun, funny stuff behind the scenes there. Yeah, it, it's going to be fascinating to see how this bill ends up, whether or not uh, the local preemption language is included in it. It doesn't look like it will be. That would allow local jurisdictions, counties, to pass more strict gun laws than the state has. That looks like that is out of the bill. Uh, there, there is a possibility of having so-called red flag language in there. So if somebody is uh, exhibiting signs that uh, they may uh, be having some emotional trouble, uh, their guns could actually be taken away. Uh, if that language is in there, that's going to be somewhat controversial as well. Well, you've been doing this for a while. I'm sure nothing surprises you, but any surprises today? Uh, not really. The only surprise really is that they got done so early, and I think a, a lot of it is to attend the services for Tyrone Thompson that we uh, heard about earlier in the broadcast. Uh, a lot of lawmakers wanting to pay their respects to him and uh, recognize his service here in this building as right behind us. Well, we have a full wrap-up coming up at 11 o'clock uh, this evening, and then tomorrow, uh, Steve and I both will have much more on a special edition of Politics Now. That's tomorrow at 4 30 p.m. So that'll do it for us here at Carson City with Steve Sebelius. I'm Patrick Walker, 8 News Now. All right, gentlemen, thank you.